Hey, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and hey, Shalom to the elect. It's a separation of migrant families, shameful against human rights. And that's a miracle for you. All right, so we're going to play this clip. We're going to get into it, man. Illegal immigrant children are being separated from their parents at the U.S.-Mexico border due to Washington's new controversial immigration policy. A senior government official said on condition of anonymity that the family partitions have sharply increased over the past weeks. This comes after Donald Trump administration said there were over 600 family separations in a two-week period in May. The administration made the announcement after the implementation of a new zero-tolerance policy toward illegal migrants. Before the policy came into effect, there were nearly 1,800 family separations in just 17 months through February this year. Zero tolerance means that all illegal migrants are arrested and criminally charged after entering the U.S. This leads to children being separated from their parents. Policy has been denounced by the United Nations as well as rights activists. So, as you see through the spirit, man, you uh, northern tribes, which we say northern, all right? Because Israel was separated, when you go back in, in Israel was separated, when you go back in the time, even even before the Assyrians, man. So, um, brief history on that was when, because Solomon went off, he made altars into other gods. Therefore, the Most High um, separated in, 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 in the time of his son, in the time of his son Rehoboam, he separated Israel and, um... He separated Israel and Judah. All right. So this here is reads here. First Kings 11 and 7. Then did Solomon build in high place for Kamash, the abomination of Moab and the hill that is before Jerusalem and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their powers. And Yahweh was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord power of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. So I'll get one second, I'll get. See something real quick. Try to turn off my notifications. I guess I can't do it on this one. But it is what it is. All right, so this is uh, back at verse 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my, co my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. How be it? All right. So his son um, being Rehoboam. All right. Um, his son being Rehoboam, the most high rend the, the he basically split. Um, separated Israel. Verse uh, 13. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom. But I will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake. For Jerusalem's sake which I have chosen. And the Lord. St um, okay that was it on that. I'm going to skip down to. Verse. Twenty-nine, And it came to pass at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way, and he had cl clad him with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and writ it in twelve pieces. And he said unto Jer Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord. The God of Israel, behold, I will rend the kingdom 
out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel. Okay? So it's just a... Um, now with that, I want to skip to 1 Kings chapter 12. You know, just further proving a point of how, um, you know, Israel, even though we're all Israel, in the Bible, sometimes when you hear um, Israel, you got to uh, know that that represents the northern kingdom. Um, 1 Kings chapter 12. I'm trying to see where I'm going to start. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 12. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king has appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. You know, because they were um, asking Rehoboam, like, are you going to treat us as harsh as um, are you going to treat us as harsh as your father did? Or are you going to um, you know, uh, let up on us? Alright. Let me see. It's like it. I don't want to go off. Okay, yeah, that was correct. Just want to make sure. Say, so it was asking um Rehoboam like how, how basically how are you gonna deal with us? Are you gonna treat us as harsh as your father did, or are you gonna um have mercy upon us? So um, you know he the wise men. I mean, you know the elders came to him of the city, and then he he took counsel of the elders, and then he took counsel of his friends. His friends were telling him basically be a nigga. All right, which is through the spirit that we're going to read, you know, to uh, be harder on him than his father was. And then, but the elders was telling him, you know, have mercy upon him. So um, this is First Kings chapter 12, verse 13. So Jeroboam, which is, you know, as we read, was um, he would be the leader of the northern tribes, Israel. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day. As the king has appointed, ha, had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him. And spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made, made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastened you with whips, but I will chastise, chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from Yahweh. You see, so the cause was from Yahweh. All right, and keep that in mind. That a the Most High could put a, a spirit on a king. All right, for a particular reason, that he might perform his saying, which Yahweh spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto unto them, you know, like I said, this is. At this point, this is after the split. Um, so when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your to your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. All right, but that was the point on that, man. Basically, going to show you how you know Israel, Israel and um um Judah, which Judah consists of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they were separated. All right, even back, you know, where well, they were separated after um, you know, what I'm saying after basically uh Solomon died. So now with that, I want to go into Hosea. Which I believe the book of Hosea, this is a great book because basically any chapter in Hosea, you could go in how it talks about Ephraim, which Ephraim, Israel is interchangeable because Ephraim also represents the northern tribes, so-called Hispanics. All right, you northern tribes consist of you uh, so-called Puerto Ricans, so-called Cubans, so-called Dominicans, so-called um, Colombians, you South Americans, um, Colombians, uh, Uruguay, that's the tribe of Asher. 
All right, Colombia to Uruguay. Um, Neftali would be Argentina and Chile. Cubans would be you so called. I mean, you so called Cubans would be the Manessites, Ephraim, um, Puerto Ricans. You know, Simeon, Dominicans. Uh, who else? Gad, North American Indians, Reuben, Seminole Indians. You know, um, I think that was all. All right, but like I said, you go into uh any any book, man, which I believe. I chose this book because I, I believe it best us des describes this video which I have played for you, for the Akium. And it says separation of migrant families shameful against human rights. You know, and at this point, you know, it's become such a problem that, you know, Press TV, Press TV has been doing, um, you know, ha ha had to do a video on it, man. You know, and a lot of people, it was, when you watch the video, I'm going to just play more. Joining us now out of Sao Paulo is Shoban Saxena, journalist and political commentator. Hello, sir. It's a pleasure to have you back on the program. Your thoughts on a country built by immigrants turning its back on immigrants? It's not just turning its back on immigrants. Actually, there's a... Yeah, and that's, that's what it is, man. You know, they say immigrants turning their backs on immigrants. Because really, you, so you northern tribes were here first. All right, that's why you you go into what if you look up uh um Mexicans or Cubans or um Nicaraguans, they'll say um they'll date their history back to pre uh um Colombian um like their history they were uh referred to as pre Columbian. Why? Because before uh this guy Cristobal Colon or the world knows him as Christopher Columbus, all right, before he conquered this place. All right, it was already inhabited. Okay, so them being immigrants, all right, basically being not from here, they're gonna, they're gonna, um, Salaki, I lost my train of thought. Them being in immigrants, like they said, immigrants basically going against immigrants, man. They should understand. All right, but as the scriptures say, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, to destroy. All right, here it is. You know them uh northern they they ain't got shit man, you know you would think this guy uh this devil Trump, you know the average um mind you know they would think that you know he would have some mercy on them because over there in Central America they feeling it man, you know prostitution drugs, all right Jake killing Jake just like it is over here with uh um Judah so called um African Americans, all right, so you would think they would understand. All right, I believe it was a um story where it came out where they were pleading for um asylum or something like that because if I believe like they were saying if you plead for asylum, you might have a chance to be over here and you could have a chance to be over here, which I don't know why the hell you would want to be over here. You know, it's not it's not peaches and cream over here neither, man. But you know that was the spirit of the Most High, basically bringing that was the spirit of the Most High bringing Northern over here, man. Because they're feeling it too, man. It's like at this point in time, you got over there in Guatemala. It was a huge, it's a crazy earthquake. All right, coupled with uh, um, a volcanic eruption. You know, so you know is feeling it too, man. You know, and it's, um, it's like you're not going to do too much talking. I'm just play the video. There's a persecution. There's a crackdown on, on migrants. And this really shows that United States is on the verge of becoming a police state if it already has not become a police state under Donald Trump. Major, man. Because a part of the prophecies is what? I'm going to come back to the Hosea 5. But like he said, this shows that America is becoming a police state. All right? But we say the time of, that's the time of Jacob's trouble, man. What's the time of Jacob's trouble? As you see, it's... it's, it's it's basically here, but it's not full fledged. All right. This is um. I'm trying to find that preset where it talks about how one people should go in. Cause the scriptures talk about martial law. That's a police state, martial law, man. You watch that movie, um, The Seeds.
I can't just 15. And 17, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able for. Be Let me see. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall free if be afraid. You know, like I said, going into martial law, where these cities are going to be blocked off. All right, so this police state is coming, man. All right, and it's going to be coupled with all types of uh, disasters, man. So-called terrorist attacks, you know, because when you watch the video, they um, he talks about how Trump, you know, says that they're terrorists and that they're rapists and that they're this and that. So who's to say now that you know, being that that's uh one of the big stories. Who's to say that Trump won't stage a terrorist attack and blame it on them, man? You know, just you know, just speculation, just speculation. I mean, this is really shameful. This is a violation of human rights. This is uncivilized behavior. If any other country in Asia or, or in Middle East was doing this kind of uh, a treatment, it was giving this kind of treatment to migrants or the people, I think the U.S. would be calling for bombing that country. Well, I'm not suggesting that, but what's happening is really shameful. More than 2,000 families have lost their children. The children have been taken away. And uh, more than 100,000 families have been uh, arrested or facing uh, uh, different types of persecution across the country. This is really a really very serious situation. And as you said rightly, this is a country built by migrants. And But this is what America is looking like under Donald Trump. Who hey, it just came to me. This cause of proof that you know the tribes are under the curses just as hard as um the southern tribes, man. Because here it is, you have uh, so-called Chinese, so-called Japanese, you know, um, so-called Africans. They come over here every day, all right? And they're fine. Nothing's happening to them, man. But you tribes, man, you're in the bottom, all right? Because we are under the curses, according to Deuteronomy 28. All right, let me see. Deuteronomy 28 and 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind grope in the darkness. You know, you're trying to leave, you know, you're catching crazy amounts of hell in your country and you think you're going to come to America and get some, um, you know, get some peace. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind grope in the darkness and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. All right. So you're not prospering in your ways. You, you know them too, man. Because you're under the curses. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save you. Alright? Going to prove too for you um, Christians out there, so-called Christians. Alright? They're not saved. What the hell are you saved from, man? You know, you turn on the news and you see that you're not saved, man. You look up in the sky, you see chemtrails and you see that you're not saved, man. Alright? You put a... Uh, uh, shit. You put a... um. You know, hey, you go into your sink, you know, you test that water, you see that's uh, nothing but fluoride and all types of chemicals in your water, you see that you're not safe yet, man. You know? Well, he's in America first, but it's being done at the cost of poor people who are coming from Central America, from those countries which are victims of American foreign policy. And this is really important. Many of these countries, whether it's Guatemala or El Salvador, the governments have been... Uh, Again, again, toppled by United States. There's a poverty there. Again, the reason is United States. And when these people want to run away from these countries and come to U.S. in search of livelihood, they're hardworking people who want to work and contribute to America. They're being treated like criminals. And the, the whole families, even children, are being punished for this. This is really a shameful behavior. And that's the thing, something that Donald Trump has cunningly tried to do here in the midst of all this is, is paint this narrative that these people are criminals. He's trying to demonize and criminalize these desperate migrants. They're running from crime. They're running from cartels and mafias and corruption and, and gang, gang life, you know, activities back in their home countries, some kind of conflict, some kind of desperation. Yet when you get, they, they get to the U.S.-Mexico uh, border, Donald Trump has time and again painted them as the problem. I mean, this see, <laughs> so you ain't no guy, you ain't no different from us, man. You looked at as the problem, man. 
Even though this damn devil's a problem. All right? But you, you're under the curses, man. Okay? Now, I want to um go back, get that Hosea 5 now. This is uh, Hosea 5 and 8. Blow ye the trunk, blow ye the cornet in Gib Gibeah, Gibeah, Salakia, in the trumpet in Ramah. Cry aloud at Bethaven after thee, O Benjamin. Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which shall surely be. The princes of Judah were like them that removed the bounds. You know? And, you know, as you can see, that's actually talking about Ephraim. But, you know, you could, you see how even though it's actually talking about the tribe of Ephraim, you Israelites, man. All right. Which now, you know, going into you uh, Zebulonites, because you Zebulonites are uh, Central Americans, so-called Central Americans. All right. So Ephraim shall be desolate in the day rebuke among the tribes of Israel. Have I made known that which shall surely be, you know, because even at the, um like when you go into when Christopher Columbus, so-called. When he came to America, you Ephraimites, you were slaughtered so bad, man, that it's, uh, you know, in history, it said that, in history, they say that, um, fuck, man, it's fucking Satan. In history, they say that, it's like, hold up, one, one second, I can I know I should have did that in the first place, man. You know, in history, they slip to lock it. In history, um, they say that you, uh, Ephraim, which you know, Ephraim, their Hebrew name is a pardon because they're very fruitful. They have a lot of kids. But it was it was said that Ephraim was cut down to 500, man. Whereas before, they were like, what, 50,000 or something to that extent? All right. And as you see now, man, it, same thing's happening to you, uh, Zebulonites. Ephraim shall be desolate in a day of rebuke among the tribes of Israel. Have I made known that which shall surely be. The princes of Judah were like them that removed the bounds. Therefore, I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. Therefore, will I be unto Ephraim as a moth and to the house of Judah as rottenness, you know, you Jake still getting shot down the streets, you still being, um, you over here in America, so you know how it is, all right, but for you, uh, so-called immigrants, you, uh, Central Americans, whoever chooses to come over here for a better life, you're gonna find out that you're actually, like the scriptures say, man, the brother, he always brings this out, it says, um, um, Hosea 9 and 13, Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Okay. So you bring forth your children to the murderer, man. Your ass going to jail. Just like in, um, ain't, you know, and, uh, that's also goes to show you that we in modern day slavery, man. You know, because what happened in slavery, man? You know, the parents would go to this. He probably would go to Florida while the kid would go to Georgia, man. Or the parents will go to Florida while the kid will go to North Carolina, you know? So it's um back at Hosea chapter 5. Verse 12. Therefore, while I be into Ephraim as a moth, you know? Because you, basically, you, you Zebulonites, you're like a, a moth to a flame, man. You know? You know? What a, what a, a moth goes to the flame because what? He sees the light, man. Then when he gets there, he gets burnt. Okay? And to the house of Judah as rottenness, when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to Assyria and sent to King Jareb. Yet could he not heal you, nor cure you of your wounds. You know, so you coming over here seeking asylum. All right, which when you had, I looked up that word, uh, uh, Jareb. Hold up, let me see something there. Looked up Jareb, right? And it says contender. 
you know? And Trump is the contender of the world, man. <laughs> you know? So that's that's spiritual. It says, for I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue you. Why? Because you went against the, the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Written up in Deuteronomy 28. I mean, um, you know, written up in um, the so-called books of Moses. You know, but if you go into Deuteronomy 28 and 15, you know, the Most High tells us, if you don't follow these laws, I will bring all these curses upon you. So from uh, verse 15 all the way into verse 68, all right, you got you got that work, man, as Jake say. <clears throat> it says, for I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I and I will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place so they acknowledge their offense and seek my face and their affliction. They shall seek me early. Talking about the elect, you know. And then, you know, you can have Israel and, you know, call for the Heavenly Father. All right. But the Most High ain't going to hear the asses. You know, but he will hear the elect. It's lucky. This is um Jeremiah chapter fifty verse thirty three. You know, I retract that statement. That's talking about uh Slaki. When he said their affliction, they will seek me early, because they're gonna seek the Heavenly Father, man. They're gonna pray. Jesus Christos, this, that, and the third. But Lord, really that's not his name anyway. Alright, but the Lord ain't gonna hear him, man. You know? <laughs> You know, because hey, like um, like we just read in um Second Edges the fifteenth chapter for because of their pride, you know, a lot of uh northern know about this truth, man. You hear a lot of uh, you see a lot of brothers waking up all over the world, man. Over the brother, you got a brother over there in Costa Rica, now you got brothers over there in Peru, you know, you got brothers over there in Mexico, you know. So northern know about this truth, man, but they choose not to uh, get right. This is Jeremiah 50 and 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. You know? And all they and all that took them captive held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. Yahweh of hosts is his name. And that's why we're telling our people to come back to the law, come back to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know, because you ain't going to get no um, rest in this place, as you can see, man. To this very day, you're still being treated like a, a slave back in the 1800s, man. You know, he shall thoroughly plead their cause that he make that he that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. You know. Hey, man, so that was about it, man. With that, Lord, will you, Occam's edify, shall warm to the elect.